how to travel Seattle, Washington in a day has always been a great challenge because of the overwhelming amount of things you can do in the city. You want to try the best food, see the best places, and of course, experience the city. That was awesome. That was so fun. <laughs> our names are Nat and Max, and you'll usually find us traveling around our beautiful home country north of the border. But after packing our bags to explore a charming German town in the Cascades of Washington, we're making sure we spend the day in Seattle enjoying old favorites and discovering new places we haven't seen before. Good morning guys! Welcome to a fine day here in Seattle. And although it's our last day here today, we still have a lot of locations that we wanted to visit. And what a way to start off the morning than the waterfront of Seattle. We're here right now by Seattle's Great Wheel and we're working our way to our first destination. And this one, I think, is one of the more iconic places here in Seattle. Since it's been two years since we last stepped on this place, it's gonna be a fun one. We say it's a fine day here in Seattle because the sun is out, but it's still very cold where you're in the shade. I think it's only 8 degrees today. Now I know, you probably heard this on every single Seattle travel video. But there's a reason why the Pike Place Market should be on top of your list when coming to Seattle. That was awesome. That was so fun. <laughs> Considered as the soul of Seattle, this market is one of the most historic and largest public markets in the United States. You'll find different small businesses, from flower shops to handcrafted goods. A trip to Seattle wouldn't be complete without it. It's so nice to see that the market is coming alive again. Everything is going back to normal. So we're here to try the world's best mac and cheese. And it seems that they only have two branches. One in Seattle and one year. Imagine the world's best mac and cheese. Eight ounce. That's seven. Okay guys, this is going to be our first food venture here in Seattle today. This is Beecher's Mac and Cheese and it's said to be one of the most popular cheeses here in Seattle. And also if you guys remember the last video, we tried the pretzel with the cheese serving. The cheese came from this place. Ooh, that looks so creamy. Okay, let's try this out. Exactly like the dip that we had in the pretzel in the last video. And it's, it's to a point where it's not that hot, so you don't get burned. It's just warm, and it keeps the mac and cheese to a perfect state. Still smoking hot. Mmm, it's so good. The cheese is like a soup, like a very creamy soup. And I think we came at the best time because we were saying to the guy working there that they weren't so busy. But it turns out they just opened, so we got there on the perfect time. First one. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cheese on your nose. <laughs> really? You guys want a maple bacon one? Yes, please. That'd be great. <laughs> So another must-eat here in Pike Place, still we've heard, is the Daily Dozen Donuts. So, so we grabbed half a dozen of their mini donuts and we took it here at the waterfront viewing deck. Which I think is one of the best places you can take your food because it's kind of secluded and you get this nice view of the ocean. Should we try the maple bacon? <laughs> your favorite. <laughs> they have a maple bacon flavor. Let's try it. Mm. Tastes like bacon. And I think the lady gave us a little bit of an extra of mini donuts because we found like eight pieces in there. <laughs> Next one. I'm not sure what the flavor for this, but it looks like a caramel donut. Let's try it. Mm. It's 
so soft. The icing is sweet, but not too sweet. It's the right texture. Mm -hmm. Not too sweet. Good. I don't know what flavor that is though. I don't know too. <laughs> The dedication is real. <laughs> Good. So we're currently leaving Pike Place right now to go to another spot here in Seattle and also we posted a video today and we've been appreciating all of the likes and comments that you guys have made and actively responding to them. The roads here in downtown Seattle are a lot like Vancouver. <laughs> They're very steep, not very flat. You can see like we're on a 45 degree incline right now. I think this is the 10th time that we've been to Seattle, but we've never been to the Space Needle. If you guys have been to the Space Needle, let us know in the comment section if it's worth visiting. Ready? <laughs> so I think this is pretty much it. <laughs> Wow, it got nice views. So we're here at Cary Park, and which is I think one of the more popular parks or kind of spots here in Seattle. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really expect to be it this small. Find more? No. <laughs> <laughs> Cary Park is very popular here in Seattle because I think it has a nice view of the city skyline of Seattle, including the needle. Nice views from here. Right now it's 11 a.m. so the sun is beaming, but I think this is the perfect spot if you want to watch the sunset. So I think this is kind of like a nicer neighborhood too, right? Yeah, the houses are all nice. And big. <laughs> yeah, compared to like city living, it's just more of like condos. And also you can see the islands from here and I think that's the Bainbridge Island and you have to take the ferry to get there. Maybe one of these days we should check out the islands. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Look, remember we rented this in Calgary? Yeah, so I think this is one of the more eco-friendly transportations here in Seattle. I think this is something new too. I don't think this is a scooter. It's more of a bike, isn't it? Yeah, so if you don't have any car, you can use this to roam around Seattle. That was a nice little break from the city. Now we are going to visit one of our favorite burger joints here in Seattle. Super happy that we chose to explore a city on a Sunday because everything parking wise is free. I think it's free. Okay, perfect. Yeah, unlike Vancouver, right? Where seven days in a week you have to pay for parking. Yeah. <laughs> so great to be back here. I think the last time we had Shake Shack was two years ago on our trip to New York. And whenever we go to Seattle, we always make sure to stop by this place. And it feels kind of strange that it's not that busy today. Yeah, it's always busy. Maybe because it's just 11.30, so it's pre-lunch. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know with you guys, but I'm a big consumer of ketchup and I'm not even sure how people eat burgers without ketchup sometimes. So the favorite item that I always order is the shroom burger. I know it's only for vegetarians, but I love mushrooms. And yeah, and that's a portobello mushroom right now. Deep fried with cheese. And for myself, I always go with the shack stack, which has the portobello mushroom, but you also get a beef patty. Mm. Oh, I just remember something. The buns that they use here in Shake Shack is always buttered. Yeah. Yeah. 
You can see the cheese coming out of the portobello mushroom. So good. Still a bit sad that Vancouver doesn't have a Shake Shack branch yet, but it, it just makes the drive to Seattle a bit more worth it. That's a good guess. So we just kind of popped by here at University of Washington because we wanted to check out a place called the Suzalo and Allen Library. We're not kind of sure if it's open to the public. Uh, it says online that it's only for like students and staff and their families. But we're here so we may as well just check it out. The Suzalo and Allen Library is one of the most recognizable buildings in the university and is considered as the jewel of the University of Washington. We're big fans of the Harry Potter films and we can't help but compare this place to the Great Hall in Hogwarts. But of course, we kept our squirming in our heads as this place is a real library where people come to study in silence. That being said, we were free to roam around and admire the level of detail they had on every single piece. It's just amazing how they maintained the beauty of this place all these years as the place was built in the early 1900s. So if you guys missed the last video, we kind of detailed all of the pre-entry requirements of crossing back to Canada. If you guys missed it, I'm gonna link it down in the description down below so you guys could check it. But since our time here in Seattle is kind of ending, we are about to cross back to Canada and go back home and see if all of our requirements are valid. So wish us luck. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. Transport's enough. Uh, what do you both live? Uh, we both in Vancouver. How long were you gone? A couple of days. Did you, did you do what? Uh, just traveling around Seattle. Nice. Where did you stay? Uh, in a Sonata uh, Hotel. Bellevue. Bellevue. Tonesta, sorry. Is that good? Total cost goods coming back? $60. Do one of you have a test to show me? Yes. Meet up with any friends or family down there? Just the two of you? No, just yes, us. Alright, see you later. Thank you. Bye. That was uh, pretty seamless. <laughs>